Hey everybody, welcome back to Gets Cool Dude. I'm Dan, the Gets Cool Dude, and today we're going to be talking about GitLab, which you can see is already loaded in my browser right here at gitlab.com. GitLab is sort of like GitHub if you're familiar with it. Um, it provides you your origin for your project or projects. Uh, it's an issue tracking system, and it actually provides things like code review and a place to keep a wiki all in one spot. It's a really helpful addition to Git as a tool set. It even supports things like continuous integration and testing through something called GitLab CI. I don't think we'll have time to talk about that today, but maybe in a future video. Um, so if you're familiar with GitHub, it provides similar capabilities. Um, I actually prefer GitLab myself. I use it at my job, so I know quite a bit about it. And today we're just going to touch on a few main introductory topics. Uh, we'll create a project, we'll go over authentication for users, uh, create an issue, and fix an issue using a merge request. So GitLab, as a product, releases their, uh, their system monthly, I believe. And they have two versions. They have a community edition, which I believe is this free one available at GitLab.com. And they also have an enterprise edition. Uh, which isn't free. It provides a little bit more advanced functionality, which uh, is probably too advanced for this video, so we might talk about that in a different different video. But um, normally in practice, people would stand up their own GitLab service, but just to make it easy for me, instead of have, trying to install a server on my local network here, I'm just going to use the GitLab.com instance so we can mess around with it. So uh, let's jump into it, shall we? Uh, first thing we're going to do is create a new project which when you first log in you got nothing going on it kind of tells you uh, what you can do here you can create a new group um, a new project groups are ways to manage permissions uh, maybe I'll go over that in a new video let's just jump in and make a new project here so it shows you right away what your project path is going to uh, look like for the URL we have to name it so we're gonna call it hello we'll just get a test project and this is where you can put a cool description of what your project is and here's a permission level so you can tell it if you want it to be publicly visible to others so let's just go ahead and hit uh, publicly visible in case you guys want to actually clone the project and look at it and all you got to do is hit create project and waiting for GitLab I like waiting for Comcast internet okay so this is great Project Hello was successfully created. You won't be able to pull or push project via SSH until you add an SSH key to your profile. More on that in a second. We're actually going to fix that. Um, but GitLab provides HTTPS authentication as well. And it shows you the URL here, which... Why isn't this loading? Wouldn't let me highlight the whole thing. So... If I copy the URL, paste it over here. I don't know why it's being. Yeah, there's the full the full URL. So even though you couldn't see it here, let me minimize this window for a second. Okay, so this is the URL it gave us for our project. Now, my terminal, you can see that we're already in a Git repo called Hello, and if I do Git status, you'll see that we're on the master branch. Nothing to commit. Working directory clean. Let's copy this URL and we're going to set this to our new origin now you might wonder well what's our current origin you can view that in uh, git config and it looks like we set up an origin in a previous video to be a location on a machine 192 yada yada, yada into this uh, bare repo so for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and remove that origin and we're going to act like we're going to set up our new origin in GitLab, which I'll probably end up using permanently because it's easier. And uh, the way you do that is git remote remove origin git add. Uh, I'm sorry, git remote add, add origin and then give it the URL. Check it out. Just copy that, paste it. Hit go. And so let's go ahead and even though we've added the remote, we haven't pushed to it yet. So we're going to do that. We're going to push to origin the master branch. 
and it's asking immediately for the password for my user get school dude at gitlab.com so let's just go ahead and give it the password so what's happening here is it's trying to authenticate via https because we haven't set up an ssh key we're going to do that next so uh if you're confused by it don't worry about it and we went ahead and successfully pushed our master branch so let's flip over here and if we reload our project hello page we will see something totally different we now see the project uh, top level page where you can actually see uh, the branches that exist in this origin in this case it's just master because we only push that branch and the files associated with that repository okay cool so we use this HTTPS mechanism you notice we had to type our password nobody really likes typing their password every time they interact with a remote I know I don't like that and uh, so most of these uh, I think GitHub does this too. You can actually authenticate with SSH, but it requires you to upload your public SSH profile. And so the way that we do that is we go into our profile settings. Is it our profile or settings? Let's see. They change it every time they. Okay, so profile shows you your activity. I'm pretty sure we want settings here. And along the top here, we have SSH keys. Now we don't have one, and it gives you instructions on how to generate one. I actually don't have one for this Dan user in here. The way you can tell is you CD to your SSH folder, and if you don't see a file called rsa.pub or the like, that means you don't have an SSH key set up. So you can easily set one up by typing SSH keygen, and usually you can just hit enter through all these and what comes out of the process is your ID rsa.pub so if I just cat that to the screen you'll see it's this long string of characters that represents your public SSH key this is the key that you want to copy and paste into your profile so check it out and then what does it say don't paste the private part of the SSH key that's very important paste the public part which is usually contained okay so it tells you right there exactly what to do you don't have to remember it from a video hit add key and we've created an authentication mechanism for this computer now I say that because you can add multiple SSH keys if you work for multiple computers and the whole thing will be seamless you don't have to worry about typing your password all the time so let's go back to our repo and see if we can test this out we're going to create a new test branch and uh, just push it so that we interact with our remote let me get rid of this background so i don't know let's go ahead and we'll just go into hello cpp we'll add a comment we just want to make a commit here save the file oops fingers went crazy on me there okay so we're gonna add git commit -m, added comment okay so we created a new commit and we created it on the master branch we're gonna push the master branch if I'm going too fast for you guys make sure you watch my other videos where I cover all these commands uh, we're gonna push hmm well, this is unexpected says still wants my password why does it want my password oh yes 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 okay here's what's going on let me cancel that so if we look in our git config I did this to myself my apologies I'm doing this on the fly so it you know when we set our origin to this we imply HTTPS right so what we can do is we could remove the origin and re-add it for the SSH or a shortcut is to just go in here and change this to the SSH URL so let's do that real quick let's go back to our projects and we only have one project Dan get school dude slash hello now just as a quick aside this is the namespace this is the project so the namespace is my name but in GitLab you can create groups which is a good way to assign people to particular groups of projects which is pretty cool um, okay but we came in here to grab this address the SSH version of the address not the HTTPS version and we switch over here and let's just change it real quick okay so that's the new address 
git at gitlab.com. Now, what's cool about GitLab is, you know, you might think, why isn't this my username at gitlab.com? Well, GitLab handles the permissions for your projects, and it does it by managing your public uh, SSH keys. So everyone authenticates as git at gitlab.com. GitLab handles all the complex stuff of figuring out who you are and what permissions you have to what projects, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and save this config file. And even though, okay, so our push failed earlier because we didn't give it a password. Let's try to push again now that we have the SSH set up. And you'll notice right away we get this authenticity of host uh, warning message. And it's basically asking me, do you want to authenticate uh, with this fingerprint? So we hit yes. It added it to our known host, so it won't ask us to do that again. And we were able to successfully push our change to the master branch. So let's go ahead and switch over there and see if we can see it. Okay, uh, let's see, repository. So remember, we added one comment to this file, hello CPP. We can actually browse over to it. Here's the comment that we added. So this is a pretty cool mechanism. Uh, we can browse all the files in our repository, and we can actually do it for whatever branches we have. Um, so right now, there's only a master branch. But we're about to create another branch because I want to show you how the issue system and the merge request system works because it's really, really cool. OK. So let's go ahead and go to issues. Now, we don't have any issues right now, but it's telling me we can make one. And this is our issue description area. So luckily, we actually have an issue in our project that we might want to fix right now. And that is, if we type make, we actually get this warning message on box CPP. We have an unused variable foo. So let's make an issue for that. Let's copy the whole thing. Copy that. And what we'll do is we'll put that in the description. The title, we'll call it fix warning associated with foo. This is just an example. And the warning is this. I'm just showing you what's pretty cool about. So this is GitLab flavored markdown. Now this triple quote lets you do code blocks, for example, and you can hit preview. So it'll look like this. See, this is monospace, so it's easier to read. This is the exact warning. You can actually uh, give it syntax stuff. So like, for example, if you wanted to show a Python block, you could type that and it would highlight it with Python syntax. Now this isn't Python syntax, so it looks weird, but uh, just to show you. And if you have questions about the markdown, just click this link and it'll show you that. Okay, so here you can assign it. Uh, let's assign it to me. If you have milestones, you can assign them here. We don't have any of those. And let's just go ahead and hit submit issue. Okay, cool. So now we have issue number one opened by me. This is the problem. If we go to the issues page, we'll see it listed as the only issues. But obviously, you can have a bunch of issues here. And this lets you filter on who created them, what milestone they are, labels, etc. So one thing that's pretty cool about this is in GitLab, it's based around merge requests. Now we're about to make a merge request and tie it to this issue. So we're giving us full traceability of the issue that was created and the fix that went with it. So the first thing we need to do is create a topic branch in our repository, because right now we're on the master branch. So let's go ahead and do that, git checkout-b. And uh, I don't know, let's call it unused var fix. Okay, so now we're on a new branch called unuse var fix that's at the location of master. Let's go ahead and go into box CPP and fix the warning unused variable. So this is unused. Let's just go ahead and delete it. And let's delete this comment too because that's not doing anything. Git status shows our changes. We're going to go ahead and git add box CPP to our index. And we're going to commit now fix warning in box CPP. We'll give it just a short description. This is where you'd, you'd put nice long commit message. If you had a more significant content than this one or two line fix. And the cool thing that I want to show you here is <laughs> this is a comment added by a hook from our previous video. We want to put somewhere in the message fixes 
and then the reference to the issue number in GitLab. I'll show you why we want to do this because it provides a cool automatic functionality. So we made the commit locally. We see our local uh, commit here, but we haven't pushed it yet. So let's go ahead and push. Uh, what's our branch name? We're going to push this branch, git push origin branch name, hit enter. And there it goes. OK. All right, new branch created. It's pretty cool, too, that actually GitLab gives you this remote message telling you, hey, if you want to create a merge request for this content, go here. Well, we don't have to copy that directly. We already have it open. Um, if we click on the merge request area, GitLab notice, hey, you pushed a branch recently. Do you want to create a merge request for it? Let's do it. OK, so it automatically fills out some of the merge request info based on the commit message. But this is exactly where you would put more information if you wanted to. This merge request will create a merge commit eventually. So what's in the description is important because it will become part of the history of the Git repository itself. Now you can assign the merge request here. Let's go ahead and assign it to me and submit this create. So before I submit, let me show you this source branch. This is what you're saying. I want this content to be merged into the target branch, which in our case is master. Uh, but this would be your integration branch, your development branch, whatever the branches that people are constantly integrating with uh, on your team. In this case, we'll pretend it's the master branch. Uh, submit merge request will create the official request to merge this content into this branch. And so this merge request is automatically tied to issue number one. You can see it creates a hyperlink here. If I open a new tab, we go over to the issue that this merge request is associated with, and it tells you that it was mentioned in this commit. So you get all this really cool functionality for free. OK. So what's also cool about the merge request page is it gives you code review. So for example, if I go to the changes tab, I can actually see the code change associated with this merge request, which is super cool. So if you're working on a team and you want other people to look at it, you can say, hey, so you got a guy named Jim use this at notation. Now I'm the only person in the project, so you can do at all, which will email everybody, which is just me. Or let's pretend this guy Jim is part of my project. Take a look at this and let me know what you think. Typos and all. And you can make a comment here right in line in the code, uh, which is super cool. So if you go back to discussion, it will uh, summarize all the discussions that have happened over in the changes tab. There's also a commits tab that will show you how many commits there are. So for example, this merge request is open. I could add yet another commit by simply pushing more content to this branch. And the process can continue until people uh, find that uh, you know whoever the reviewers are, are, say the content is good, it's ready to be merged into the master branch. And then whoever is making that decision would go over here and hit merge. Now, when we hit merge, we are GitLab is actually creating a new merge commit, um, just like you would if you were merging a local branch into a local branch. It creates a merge commit, or sometimes it'd be fast forward, in which case you wouldn't have a merge commit. But um, in this particular setup, a merge commit will be created. It tells you these changes were just merged into master. The source branch can now be removed. So this branch still exists in our project, but we can remove it now if you want. And you have the also uh, the awesome capability. Let's say you don't like this change for some reason. You can hit revert, and it just undoes, uh, undoes the acceptance of merge request number one. Now, if I go to my merge request page, I have zero open. I have one merged. This is the one that we just merged. And if I flipped over to my uh, repository here, I can do a git fetch. And we'll see that master got updated. And if we look at the state of origin master, we'll see that we have this merge commit and that content in the master branch. So I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. Um, but that is basically a speed run through what the GitLab process is set up 
uh, to help you with, which is basically an issue merge request workflow, uh, which enables pretty cool functionality and traceability when it comes to things like code review. Okay. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or want to see more GitLab content. It provides a wiki capability that I'm probably not going to get into right now. And this pipelines thing is the continuous integration uh, mechanism, which is also really cool. So if you're familiar with things like uh, Bamboo or Jenkins, it provides a similar capability. Okay, that's it for today. Usually I summarize, so let's go over here and do that. It's not much to, oop, it's not much to summarize. I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, I use GitLab in my everyday job. It's a great software development tool. I highly recommend trying it out if you haven't tried it out already. Um, you can set up a free account on GitLab.com. And uh, that'll let you try out the capabilities uh, without having to install a server on your network and all that stuff. Uh, let me know if you like it. And uh, I'll probably use this setup in future videos because it's super convenient. And uh, I'm the Get School Dude, and I'll see you guys next time.